known today as the Butcher of Uganda, Idi Amin Dada Ami, is considered one of the cruelest despots in world history. Now, is this the truth, or just first world propaganda? Perhaps a little of both? I guess you'll just have to decide. Amin was the son of Andreas Nybar and Asa Atta, and was born between 1923 and 1928. His father was a member of the Kakawa ethnic group, converted from Roman Catholicism to Islam in 1910, and changed his name to Amin Dada. His father would leave him at a young age. So Amin would live with his mother, an ethnic Lugbara, and a traditional herbalist, who treated members of Buganda royalty, among others. Amin and his mother were poor. However, Amin would be a great father later in life, and would go to great expense in creating an extravagant wedding for his love. He would farm with his mother in northwestern Uganda, and would also receive a fourth grade education while doing some odd jobs. Idi Amin would have a deep desire to serve people, and in 1946 he would join the British Colonial Army. Funny enough, Amin joined the King's African Rifles as an assistant cook, but he would quickly rise through the ranks while serving in many wars and scuffles. In 1947, he was transferred to Kenya for infantry service as a private, and his unit was deployed to northern Kenya to fight against Somali rebels in the shift of war until 1949. In 1952, his brigade would combat the Mau Mau rebels in Kenya. He would be promoted to corporal the same year, and sergeant just one year later. By 1959, Amen would be made a Fante Class II Warrant Officer, the highest rank possible for a black African in the colonial British Army at the time. But his success doesn't stop here. You see, Idi Amen has a truly successful and charismatic leadership style. He was commissioned as a lieutenant on the 15th of July, 1961, becoming one of the first two Ugandans to become commissioned officers. He was assigned to quell the cattle rustling between Uganda's Karamjong and Kenya's Turkana nomads, and became a very popular figure in his home country because of his behaviors and hands-on leadership style. In 1962, Uganda was independent of the United Kingdom and the fledgling nation would require strong leaders. Amen would once again fly through the ranks until 1970, when he was promoted to commander of all the armed forces. This was not accomplished by sitting at a desk alone. He was the Ugandan light heavyweight boxing champion from 1951 to 1960, as well as a strong swimmer and a formidable rugby player for the Nile RFC in the 1950s. Amen would receive a command from Milton Obote, the executive prime minister, to remove the ceremonial king, Matusa, the second from power. Amen would not kill the ceremonial king when doing this, but instead would only exile him to the United Kingdom. It should also be noted that Amen was interested in unifying Africa and bringing all of its people together. So he went out and recruited Kakwa, Lagbara, South Sudanese, and other ethnic groups into the army, possibly thinking about his own experience as a minority in the British colonial army. This move would gain support from the people. This being said, the ousting of the king may not have sat well with him. Abote would not stop cleaning house at the king alone. 
Noticing Amen's popularity with the citizens, Abote would remove Amen from power, with Amen stepping down as the commander of the armed forces. When Amen found out that Abote was going to have him arrested for charges of illegal trade that Abote himself was responsible for, Amen had had enough. He overthrew Abote's dictatorship, who had committed many cruel acts with his secret police. Abote would later lead massacres of an estimated 500,000 people and be responsible for the division and conflicts of much of Africa. Amen took power with cheering crowds everywhere. He would hold a state funeral in April 1971 for the former king or Kakabaka of Uganda and who had now died in exile. He fulfilled his promises to free many political prisoners and would reiterate his promise to hold free and fair elections to return the country to democratic rule in the shortest period possible. Amen would later be installed as the president of the country. Under his rule, Amen became the chairman of the Organization of African Unity, a pan-Africanist group designed to promote solidarity among African states from colonials. Uganda was a member of the United Nations Commission on Human Rights from 1977 to 1979, while Amen was still president. Because of this, foreign powers, most notably the British, proposed assassinating him. Amen would continue to do his best until 1979, when he was ousted by Tanzanian forces. Milton Obote would once again take power, despite many people claiming the election was rigged. Supporters for Amen would live in hiding for decades, until this very day. During his exile, Idi Amen would cry that Uganda needed him. It was on August 16, 2003 that Amen would die due to a coma from kidney failure and his family deciding to pull the plug. He was never allowed to return to Uganda peacefully, even in this state. Despite being very wealthy, he was buried in a simple grave with no fanfare. We are determined to make the ordinary Ugandan master of his own destiny, and above all, to see that he enjoys the wealth of his country. Our deliberate policy is to transfer the economic control of Uganda into the hands of Ugandans for the first time in our country's history. Idi Amen. I'll see you next time.